Raphael Sertoli combines expertise in molecular biology and paleoanthropology to contribute significantly to cancer metabolism and ketogenic diet research. Please welcome Raphael Sertoli. Hello, hello, okay, much better, much better. Uh, it's an honor to be here today and to present the work I'm doing with Ancestralize, one of the companies I'm working for. So thank you for your attention and thank you to the organizers. So Ancestralize is a Hungarian company and the theme really is ancestral health principles in the world of N equals one. Uh, does anybody here not know the expression N equals one? R raise your hand if you don't know what it means. So N equals one is the short-term scientific notation to say a sample of one, which simply refers to a self-experiment that you would do on yourself. So it's really the intersection of ancestral health and self-experimentation that I'm here to talk about today. So what is Ancestralize? It's an app at the most basic level. That's what we're developing and it should be out in 2025. What is its main goal? Well, like most nutrition health tracking apps, it's to make users healthy. How does it work? Now, this is where it gets a little technical and interesting. It's a Bayesian network, so a statistical Bayesian network that estimates your probability of particular conditions and then also uh, recommends ways to reduce your risk at the basic level. So what is it all based on? It comes back to ancestral health principles, as we think this is crucial uh, to make good decisions in uh, medicine, because medicine is very complicated, and I think it's useful to know where we came from, how we evolved, and that's the underlying ethos in the app as well. So a quick roadmap of my talk. So I'm gonna talk about what we do at Ancestralize. Uh, I'm a senior medical researcher in the medical research team. Uh, the second part is gonna be how Ancestralize and the Citizen Science Foundation overlap. So why am I here today? What's the relevance? And third, how Ancestralize departs from the mainstream, meaning mainstream medicine, mainstream healthcare, and other nutrition tracking apps as well. So what we do is uh, ancestralize is find out what causes disease. And as you can see, this tangled web of causal connections is a Bayesian network. So this is what the raw version of what we're building looks like. Uh, it's loads of different disease nodes and symptoms and pathological mechanisms. And it looks very complicated, but the advice we give hopefully will be very straightforward. So we try to find out what causes disease by, as you can imagine, reading papers, but not only. We talk to doctors, we talk to researchers, we read case reports, we talk to real people, uh, and we use every line of evidence that we can to try to figure out what causes disease. And of course, we also need to find the interventions that are likely to work. And of course, a lot of that, as you can imagine, is gonna be low carb, keto, carnivore friendly. Um, but of course, there's much more to it than that. There are supplements, there's other lifestyle aspects. So we've got a pretty big roster of interventions to suggest to people, but we've got to research them and make sure that there's a good evidence base behind them and they're, they're plausible. And finally, once we've identified as best we can the causes of disease and the potential solutions, we have to build a disease model. So we have to make sense of it, how these things work together, uh, how effective they are, what are the side effects, and we need a disease model. And this is back to the tangled web of uh, causal connections that you see here. So we need to put our foot down on what causes heart disease, what causes insulin resistance, and we can't simply be agnostic uh, about it. So how do we estimate disease risk? So this is supposed to represent statistics, and I'm no expert statistician, so hopefully uh, I'm not gonna say uh, too much nonsense on this slide, but essentially our disease model forms our initial belief. 
Then we have uh, the users of the app uh, give their labs, their symptoms, their diet, their family history, lifestyle habit, all sorts of things. And this is represented uh, by the, the red uh, curve here the, called the likelihood function. And then this forms a revised belief, which is the actual disease risk. And I like the terminology revised belief because I think that's a crucial part of any good doctor is, yes, they may have an idea of you know, the patient that's likely to come across their desk and what's wrong with them. But once they listen to that patient and take in the data, they will revise their belief about what's going on exactly. And this is why I, I wanted to emphasize this uh, Bayesian approach, statistical approach to how we calculate disease risk. So then we have a menu of interventions that we propose. So here's a very simple word cloud to give you an idea of what we're all about. So we're big on resistance training, we're big on keto, uh, you know, we look into uh, electrolytes like magnesium, sun exposure, cold exposure, psychotherapy, you know, even socializing, uh, meditation, breath work, and I could go on, carnivore, there's way, way more things. Um, so there's, there's a lot of options that we're able to propose to people. And of course, in order to be effective, you have to be able to track. So at the simplest level, that could be tracking your carbs. You can you know, have reminders set for that. And it's important to track your progress to essentially make sure that what you're doing works and you know, not simply believe it's gonna work and hope for the best. You actually have to track, track it. So that could be headaches, it could be waist circumference, it could be you know, many different things. And a really uh, thing we're, we're big on is the education part. So you're not only going to receive a recommendation, but also an explanation about how to do it and why behind the intervention. We're trying to make sure that um, the users actually understand why they're doing something, uh, not simply be told to do it and you know, not question, essentially. So that's what they would get after an estimation of their disease risk. Um, they can get a, a set of interventions that they can choose from and see how much it can decrease their disease risk, which hopefully will be a motivating factor for them. So part two is the philosophical overlap between Ancestralize and the Citizen Science Foundation. So this is something that's near and dear to my heart because I think it's uh, really important nowadays. Um, so how many people have heard of the hashtag do your own research? Okay, so this hashtag emerged during COVID. As you all remember, it was a very, very confusing time. Everyone became a virology expert and an epidemiologist. Um, and so this hashtag uh, appeared and it was do your own research and it was very controversial like anything at that time. So I'm gonna read this sentence because I actually really, really like it. It embodies the tension between empowering individuals to seek knowledge independently and the continuous challenge of uh, filtering out dogma, ideology, and propaganda from science. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you're clapping because that's how I felt when, when, I, when I read that. Um, and I think this is this, the overlap. Um, we're about self-experimentation, not taking things on authority, um, but also recognizing that there are pitfalls. There is no perfect approach, but I think empowering individuals so they can act independently is a good and one we should really seek to protect. So I also want to talk to you about the difference between what's common and what's normal. And this is maybe a little bit abstract, so please interrupt me if I'm not making sense here. Um, so let's just use a question to illustrate, is obesity common or normal? So common means something occurs often but doesn't necessarily represent what should be considered typical or standard. So that might be catching a cold. It's perfectly common, but it is not the normal state of health. The normal state of health is to be healthy, essentially. And normal means what is expected to occur for our species in its natural environment. That would be, for example, not having chronic diseases of civilization like diabetes. Right? That is not normal to have these conditions for our species because they've emerged so recently. And I think this is a crucial distinction that's often lost and is often the source of a, a loss of hope for a lot of people. They're told that their condition is normal 
when it is in fact simply common. And I think this is a nuance that's really missed in a lot of healthcare. And the way that I suggest people can extract themselves from this confusion is to use this powerful combination, which is evolutionary biology, which means understanding where your species came from, how you evolved, what was the environment, what, was, what would you encounter, and then also conducting your own N equals one self-experiments. I think this helps reset and raise your expectations around health. So with that combination, I think it's very, very powerful, and I know for a fact that a lot of people in this room have changed their life by using those things. So lastly, how is Ancestralize different? So I'm gonna illustrate this with a simplified, and I'm emphasizing this, a simplified model of insulin resistance, something we're probably all very familiar with, uh, at least in, in theory, if not in, <clears throat> if not in practice. So these um, blue boxes represent um, um, the causes of the disease potentially. The red box uh, down there is insulin resistance, and the orange boxes are the pathological mechanisms. So this is a very basic layout of, of our insulin resistance network. And the classical model is about, oh, well, insulin resistance is just about you know, energy overload, too many calories, you know, not enough calories out, uh, saturated fat is bad, poofers are good, um, this is the classical model of, of insulin resistance, essentially. And we think that's wrong. That's not how we, how we build it. So we think there's intestinal barrier dysfunction and chronic, possibly low-grade inflammation. So as some famous doctor that I can't recall now said, it all starts in the gut. We think that's probably true for insulin resistance as well. But there's also what's happening at the level of the mitochondria in uh, the cell and it's mitochondrial ROS-derived alterations in insulin signaling. And what that word salad means is that the ROS, you can imagine that as the fumes from your, the tailpipe of your car. And these fumes really tell the cell its energetic state and how it is going to handle the insulin receptors that it has on its surface to take it more or less energy in. So we're drawing a line from the gut to the mitochondria to explain insulin resistance, and we're not reducing it to just calories and too much saturated fat like the classical model is. So this is the sort of framework that you can expect if you were to use the Ancestralize app. So I wanted to try to make as clear as possible how Ancestralize was different from the mainstream medical system. And in truth, it's also different from the alternative medical system. So it's uh, different than allopathic medicine, but also alternative medicine. So first of all, we're grounded in evolutionary biology, and the mainstream just ignores evolutionary biology. Not only do they ignore it, they even negate it in some cases, which is astonishing, because that would never happen in physics. We all accept the, the physics, Newtonian physics, uh, quantum physics. That's not happening in medicine. We've ignored evolutionary biology. We perform a root cause analysis of problems, and the mainstream just does a surface level symptom analysis. We try to get fewer pills whenever possible, and the mainstream try to, tries to push newer pills whenever possible. We're heavy into preventative medicine, and as you know, healthcare is not about preventative medicine. We're very lifestyle forward. I mean, their lifestyle advice is rarely given, and when it is, it's usually harmful. So, that's another big difference. We really encourage self-experimentation and skepticism, and the mainstream just makes arguments by authority and discourages skepticism, and I think we've all had this experience in a doctor's office for different reasons, sadly. So I think this really does illustrate some, some major differences. So in conclusion, I wanna leave you with my favorite quote, but also just a summary that the ancestralized recipe combines Bayesian statistics, evolutionary biology, medical trials, molecular biology, epidemiology case reports, and anything else that we can use to build consilience of evidence for multiple domains. We do not use the evidence pyramid. We do not invoke that as a standard of evidence. I think we have something a bit more realistic uh, and effective. 
And lastly, the app is here to make it easier for you to carry out your own self-experiments and extract maximal value from them. So the quote, my favorite quote, is from Theodius Dobzhansky, an evolutionary biologist, who said, nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. So thank you for your attention, and thank you to my colleagues.